Do you hear me? Yeah, okay, great. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about uh, Gitsy actually, but I'm going to talk about like much more general things and uh, bigger things actually. Um, so my name is Adel Decker. Uh, I live in Berlin since two and a half years. I'm originally from Amsterdam. Um, yeah, I will tell you a little bit about that. Um, my talk will be about a lot of things that have to do with, with kind of the culture that we live in, like, you know, like digital, um, like young people making things, uh, government transparency, a lot of different things that are huge topics in, in today's life and that really, um, yeah, that we're very, very, very much concerned with too. And um, I mean, I love technology. Like, do, do, do you know this thing? Does anyone know this thing? It's called a twine. Yeah, okay, some people know it. So it was a Kickstarter project. So basically, we're some MIT guys from MIT Media Lab who invented like this, this device and it's connected to the internet. And basically, you can leave this device everywhere and has sensors. And those sensors connect with the internet. So basically, you can say, when the temperature is higher than 25 degrees, send me a signal back. And you can do crazy stuff with this. So you can integrate with like text messages, or you can add other sensors to it, like, uh, like an accelerator, for example. So when there's movement, or you can come up with crazy, crazy stuff. And I think it's a really creative thing. Um, they, they were uh, raising $30,000 to Kickstarter. And in the end, they raised $500,000. So it was very interesting. It's, it's a, the, the Internet of Things thing. I mean, these things make me excited, like these these devices. Um, yeah, I think like in our age, like in our, you know, we live in a very very unique moment in time where we really we have so much influence, like using technology. Like we have so much knowledge. There are so much exciting things going on, and I think it's all about taking responsibility, right? It, it, it's it's about yeah, it's about a broken world. I feel like you know, there's loads of things that are going wrong. Uh, there's these huge systems that are yeah that are flawed that are not working that are unfair and you know not not the way they should be and I think there's different ways how to how to take responsibility for that and um, I don't know like you 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 know about the Occupy movement who was there at one of the Occupy movement uh, events so that's like two people or something yeah I mean I was also not there and uh, I think that's a big thing <laughs> and and it's not like I you know I, it's kind of like I know why you're not there, right? Because it's it's a big thing. I think we all kind of agree that something is very, very wrong. But like going out the streets, like this kind of stuff, it's you know, it's not, it's just not for everyone, and it doesn't leave maybe like a big mark either. And all my friends have also not been to Occupy, uh, to the Occupy movement. And my friends are very, you know, they they really, you know, they believe in good things. They want to change things. They're very unhappy about the things that they are. But like going on the street and you know. Yeah, this kind of stuff is maybe not for us. And I think there's like way more meaningful ways how we can actually contribute to, uh, to change. And I think that starts with taking responsibility. So um, yeah, you can either do it like this or you can do it in different ways, but we have to do this now. Um, so when I was younger, uh, I, um, I lived in Amsterdam and I used, I used to work for the, for the Dutch government as a freelancer a little bit. And um, yeah, it was a huge, you know, it's a huge, like institution, obviously, is very slow, very closed, very, you know, old people that, that rule that kind of systems. And we felt there was something wrong. It's like this, you have all this government data, like like addresses of schools and, you know, like values of, uh, of um, the, uh, I don't know, like, like air, you know, air measurements, like how safe it is and how unsafe it is. And all this data that's closed or like isn't is hidden in PDFs, like you can't read it with machines. So you can't do anything with it. And I think government data is, is really one of those things where you can actually activate people to, you know, contribute to government. So what we started doing is we started like this organization, it's called Hack the Overheid. It means like hack the government. And basically what we did is like we uh, brought together journalists, developers, programmers, like designers, hackers, um, like also people that work at the government, bring them together for 24 hours with a lot of pizza and beer, and we just build stuff. So we built like, we built robots, we built like, you know, alarm things that, that react on, uh, on an air measurement, or we build like, a, like iPhone applications to find the nearest school, or you know, like a map where we show all the crimi criminality that, like, that's happening. Um, a lot of different things. And uh, they became very, very popular. Uh, we had about eight right now, so eight of these events, and it turned into an organization. It's still called Hack the Overheid. Uh, and um, yeah, we're doing a lot of stuff with local governments. And one of those things was also to scrape data. Like, I'm not sure how, how much you know of this, but 
basically you have the internet, you have like web crawlers, they're kind of bots. So they go from website to website, they visit the links that they find, and they copy paste all the information that's there. Like that, this is how Google, for example, indexes websites. And that's, you know, it's a valid way to do it. But what you can also do is use this technology to actually uh, scrape data. So copy data and copy paste it somewhere else in a very structured way, which actually means that, that machines can read it. So um, one of those things, um, if you're from the Netherlands, you know the camera from Koophandel. In, in Belgium, you also know it. It's, uh, it's a horrible institution. It's, uh, it's kind of between government and non-government. It's, um, yeah, it's really shit, actually. So <laughs> basically what you do with Karen van Koophandel, you, um, you have to subscribe. If you're an entrepreneur, you, uh, you subscribe, you pay a subscription model, and they sell out your data. And you cannot access the data, and you could not access it in the night. This website was closed in the night. It was like, it's insane, of course, because we pay them, they sell it. It's just a horrible thing. So what we did, we scraped all this information, uh, we call it Open KVK, and basically it's a, it's a, it's a better camera from Koophandel. We have all the information that's on camera from Koophandel. We create an API, so you can integrate it with other applications. And um, yeah, it became like a huge thing. We got sued, whatever, but it's still, it's still online. <laughs> and it's a great, like, way, a really good use of open data. And so we actually made the camera from Koophandel a lot better. Um, yeah, well, anyway, so this is kind of our motto always, like, don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness later. I mean, obviously, you, you'll get into trouble then, but that's, you know, you don't have to think about that. So, yeah, <laughs> so, so we moved to Berlin so two and a half years ago. Um, so with Camille, who's in the middle, and my brother, who's on the left, uh, we started a design company. And there's, I think, two things, like major things in my life that I learned, which is like, one is like, you have to learn how to program. That's like number one rule. And uh, the second thing is to have really big ideas. And those are the things that we learned. And, Berlin is a great city for that, right? It's like it has a lot of freedom, like it's a magnet for talented people. It is, you don't need much money because things are really, really cheap. And yeah, it's a beautiful place. And um, there's a lot of like technology innovation happening, which is amazing. And um, that makes you think, because if you know a lot about technology, then um, you also, the questions come pretty fast, right? So, you know, how do we use technology? Why do we use it like that? Uh, these kind of topics, and they were, yeah, they they are really, really important to think about. I think so. This is, uh, have you heard of Max Max Schrem? He's from Vienna, and uh, he found a loophole in the in the um, kind of in the EU um, uh, government policies regarding Facebook. So what what you can do with Facebook is you can ask all the information that Facebook has about you and where it's distributed. So he asked this for Facebook, it's a huge hassle. It takes like weeks and weeks and weeks, and you know Facebook obviously doesn't want to give this information. Uh, but he did it, like in the end, so it took him like two months, he got like a CD of, of Facebook. He's just an average Facebook user, right? He got his CD and he printed it out. And this is like all the information that Facebook has on him. And it's insane. It's like, I don't know, it's like this data that they collect is it's really crazy. It's like and when someone is locked out and has mutual friends with you, visit your profile, Facebook saves it. It's, it's just, you should just read through it. It's, it's very, very insane. And uh, it makes you really, you know, it makes you wonder, like, how do we use technology? But how much do we actually learn about technology, right? W where do we take responsibility to learn about what Facebook is doing? I think it's very difficult to, if you're not, you know, if you're not used to work with technology or if you're not a programmer. Uh, and on the other hand, like, technology is learning about us. And that's, that's a huge problem because we're not learning about technology, but technology is learning so much about us. And the Facebook is just an example. And... I mean, Google and stuff, they have like immense more data about this, right? So it's, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very important uh, topic. So uh, this, is, this is a quote by, uh, uh, by William, William Gibson. He's an author, like you probably know him, like he's a really, really interesting guy, really smart too. And uh, I think when we talk about technology, this is a really important thing. Like the future has, has already arrived. It's, it's just not even distributed yet. I think that's, you know, that concerns all technology. Like things are already there. You can see like, you know, the, the people that are ahead of time, that are like thinking, that have very big ideas, that are trying a lot of new stuff out. And there's also this whole backlash of people who, who do not have that access or who, don't, who are not interested in it. And... Um, yeah, that, that has some complications. So maybe you know Douglas Rushkoff. He's one of my favorite authors, actually. He writes a lot about, uh, he's a media theorist, and he writes a lot about technology, uh, jobs, um, how things are changing, a lot of really interesting topics. And uh, basically, he, he wrote this thing called Program or Be Programmed. And you know, he, he takes this notion of like, uh, you know, working, 
like using the technology and then not learning from it, it actually we use a lot. We lose a lot of a um, lot of our identity and a lot of like things that we're not used to. So we have to learn how to use technology. So basically, the point is like when when uh, when the text came, right? You have like written words. Like when they came, there was like only few people who could read. So like you could distribute like text, but only a few people could read. So we all kind of you know the masses, the 99%. We became listeners, right? We could only listen. Like there was no no literacy for this. That was the first step. So then the printing press came, right? So things changed. Like we all became readers, but there's still the people who spread the information, like the, the knowledge of like the freedom of knowledge was still in the hands of the authors. So it's still you know it's still a top-down thing. And now we're actually like in a really different situation where everyone can, uh, you know, everyone can can uh, can use a distribution channel, which is the internet or the web, and uh, we all become writers suddenly. But we that's that's the interesting thing, right? It's like so we're always one step behind. So instead of like becoming uh, becoming the people that you know that create the platform like the printing press, we still become the writers. Like we you know we we share stuff on Facebook, we share stuff on Twitter, we blog, we have our Tumblr blogs, all this kind of stuff. But we don't actually now we're in control of actually creating these platforms too. Like anyone can program, right? It's like you just have to spend a few hours on it and you can do your first lines of code. Like there's nothing that keeps you from it. And that's very strange because we're still you know we're still turning into these these writers, but we could be so much more. And I think that that's a huge problem. And um, maybe you've heard of Deborah, Deborah Spar. She's uh, she's head of um, um, Bernard College in in, uh, in New York City. And she, like 10 years ago, she wrote this book and it's called um, uh, The Ruling, Ruling of the Waves. And it's a really interesting book. And she basically says like for every technology, like technical innovation, there are four steps. So the first step is the thinkers. It's the thinkers, it's the inventors. So basically these people are, they are the people that create the things, you know, like the first radio hackers or the first people who would be like pirating TV, TV channels and the first, you know, like Tim Berners-Lee, like the hackers in their, in their addicts, like just doing it for the thrill of it. Like, because it's a new innovation, it's fun to use and these kind of things. Then you have the pioneers. And these are the people that are, you know, they find this technology, they didn't invent it, but they make use of it. Like, they make a commercial success out of it. You could say, like, Google is one of them, right? It's like, they were very early, like, we're part of, like, we're not really part of the tinkerers, like, they didn't invent the internet or something, but they were very much part of, like, the first persons who could put it into, like, a, a commercial, uh, like, a huge commercial success. And then, uh, following that, uh, that step, is a creative anarchy. And Devora, she, she calls it uh, kind of the persons that, you know, like the, these first pioneers that suddenly need rules because there's no rules in the pioneer state. Like there are no internet rules. And you know, that, that's, that's not a given. Uh, like if you look at SOPA and ECTA, all these kind of things, it's not a given that freedom of, that, that uh, freedom of information is, uh, is for everyone. And you know, we should guard this. But uh, the, the third step is creative anarchy. So these like these pioneers, they start asking for rules. Um, you can see that now actually happening. Um, so the, the the fourth one is that the government rules are right. So that's like TV, that's radio now. Everything is like under rules, under yeah, under very strict government rules. Um, the the thing is like we're now in the second stage, right? We can still like invent stuff, like invent a lot of things. There are no rules for, for the internet, right? There are still very very little rules. Like the old rules don't suffer. Which is which is great, but uh, there are still no rules. So we're in, yeah, very very unique moment of time. If you look at like a, from a techno technical, uh, yeah, innovation point of view, um, yeah. I mean, my, my final note is basically to like start programming. Like number one rule, I think, um, start programming, start like tinkering with stuff. I think we are in a really really interesting time where we can actually add value. We can create uh, meaningful products. In a very uh, open and open way, uh, I think we can leverage a lot of knowledge, like truth, uh, information, a lot of things that we would otherwise not not been uh, been able to do. And I think this is just kind of the you know it's a start. Like it's definitely not the destination, but it's like where we're we going and how we're we going there. And I think we like as designers or developers and people who think about it, like people in this room, I think we have the responsibility to to take that that notion and to put it into practice and then. Hopefully, like leave a leave a mark in the world. That's my presentation. Yeah.